The USS Gerald Ford replaces what the Navy called its Nimitz-class aircraft carriers, a fleet of 10 nuclear warships designed in the late 1960s and commissioned in May 1975. The Nimitz class is still in operation, but in 1996, Navy officials knew they'd need a new ship for the 21st century. The Navy wanted to house at least 75 aircraft on the new ship's deck, and it wanted a better nuclear energy system. As designs progressed, those requests became more precise and more numerous. Newport News Shipbuilding Company worked to turn those requests into reality. First, the company decided the Ford would use electricity for power instead of steam. In, in the Nimitz class carrier, you had a lot of service steam. Whether it went to the laundry, the galley, a lot of areas of the ship. So here, we replaced all that with, with electrical powered systems. So there's less maintenance to do, right? Those steam pipes corrode, you have to go do maintenance on the valves and uh, flush them, you know, re cut them out, replace and overhauls. Here, you won't have to do any of that. The cable is, is designed to last the life of the ship, very low maintenance. That would allow for a host of new innovations. Four of those new innovations stand out. The first is something called flexible infrastructure architecture. This is a modular design concept. So if the Navy wants to convert a room from being a storage space into a boardroom, for example, it can do that without having to hire big crews to take care of the work. Another innovation is advanced weapons elevators. Relying on electromagnetic fields instead of cables, these massive elevators can carry twice as much material than their predecessors. So we have one less aircraft elevator than uh, Nimitz class. This has three as opposed to the four. Um, all that was part of the design to enhance flight deck usage. So that's a, a, a key aspect, right? That's what the carrier does. A third major change is the use of an electromagnetic aircraft launch system. Known as EMALs, these use an electromagnetic field to catapult aircraft into the sky. Previous versions of these launchers use steam and cables. Compared with their predecessors, EMALs are lighter, smaller, more efficient, and more reliable. They can also launch a fighter jet every 45 seconds. And then there's the multifunction radar. Known as a dual band radar, these combine the tools used for big picture scans as well as precision targeting. In the past, those activities were completely separate. Now those two pieces are the same. This means fewer radar antennas are spinning and fewer people are required to keep tabs on the ship's surroundings. I've had the pleasure to serve on a lot of carriers. I was most recently the executive officer on Harry S. Truman. Before that, I served on the conventional carriers Kitty Hawk and Constellation. But my first deployment and first carrier that I was ever on was the Theodore Roosevelt. I did that back as a junior officer for Desert Storm. This ship is so different from any other ship that I've ever been on. And, and that holds true for all of our sailors. You know, no matter how many aircraft carriers you've been on before, You've never been on a Ford-class aircraft carrier. Everything we do is different. Uh, we've got a new reactor design. The way we launch and recover aircraft is different. The simple things as far as how we heat the water is different. We've gone to virtually an all-electric ship. It's going to be more networked and more connected, if you will, uh, than any other ship. By moving the island to aft, we've really improved the, the layout of the flight deck. So when aircraft land, they'll be able to come back a refuel and rearm in a, in kind of a pit stop type of a model, uh, really kind of modeled after NASCAR. You combine all that and we've been able to reduce the manpower on this ship, the crew size, by about 600 people. Now 600 folks is a lot, but when you figure 600 sailors over a 50 plus year life of the ship and uh, also a design that has streamlined our maintenance requirements and, and more robustly designed equipment. Uh, that's about a four to five billion dollar savings over the life of the ship and total operational costs. So there is a, uh, a high bill up front for this carrier without a doubt as a first to class, but it is designed from the outset to operate uh, more efficiently and to uh, have greater availability due to the uh, reduced maintenance requirements.
Gerald R. Ford, CBN 78, truly and fairly played. In naming CBN 78 after President Ford, we are bestowing an appropriate honor on a distinguished public servant who had a deep and personal connection with aircraft carriers throughout his life. No one would have appreciated more the honor of having a carrier named after him than President Ford. May the future sailors of USS Gerald R. Ford always show themselves to be worthy of their ship's name, and may they always honor the legacy of a great man. Gerald R. Ford continues our tradition of building quality ships. It is our duty, it is our responsibility, and indeed our great privilege. In time of crisis, and there were many during his presidency, President Ford and the presidents that have followed asked this one question, where are the aircraft carriers? Every day inches us closer to that day when the response from our Navy will be, Mr. President, Gerald R. Ford stands ready, awaiting your orders. Our Navy remains a symbol of the United States, of our dedicated and skilled sailors, of our technological genius and our massive but controlled military strength, which patrols the oceans of the world on a mission of peace.